Okay, we're going to discuss solvolysis. And this isn't really a technical thing, but it's something that is basically true, at least as far as I can tell. And that is the solvent is performing SN1 on some molecule. Um, so here's some properties of solvolysis, and then we'll go into the mechanism and talk about that. So, um, like with SN1 in general, we know that tertiary is faster than secondary, which is faster than primary. We do solvolysis, by the way, on alkyl halides uh, most, most of the time. And like I said, it proceeds by SN1. Uh, we use Le Chatelier's principle. So, uh, the, more, the more of the solvent we have uh, compared to the actual alkyl halide, the more it will proceed toward products of, of solvolysis. Smaller solvent molecules like water or uh, smaller alcohols like ethanol or methanol are work the best, things that are not so sterically hindered. So that, that's most of the properties to consider. So let's look at the mechanism uh, of ethanol with this uh, alkyl halide here. So the first step is the rate determining step where the bromine just falls off. And this is written strangely so fix this. So the next part would be uh, the substitution part of using the solvent and we use the electrons on the oxygen to attack the carbocation. When we do that, we notice that we get the alkyl oxonium or the, uh, the oxonium ion form. So we want to remove that using the solvent. So this would produce uh, an acidic in environment after we're done. But it's, and it's not acid catalyzed or anything, so we're actually going to get protonated alcohol when we're done with the mechanism. The result of using alcohols as a solvent to perform solvolysis are ethers. And we'll see that water produces an alcohol in this mechanism. I wanted to point this one out because this one is, has a couple technicalities to it that are good to remember and to think about. Um, so if we use water, uh, once again the bromine is just going to fall off. It's secondary so we can do that. When we do do that, however, we'll notice that we can do a shift to give us a more stable carbocation to give us a tertiary. So we, if you remember, which one moves more fast or moves faster, the methyl group or the hydrogen. And if you remember, you're, you'll recall that the hydrogen moves a lot more fast or, or a lot faster. So it hops over to the carbocation and basically moves the carbocation to the tertiary position. We then show nucleophilic attack or substitution by the water itself. Once again, we have the oxonium ion here with the charge. So we want to show that removed by the solvent, which it does, and we form hydronium ion. So our final product is the alcohol substituted in. And that, in a nutshell, is solvolysis. And you may or may not, depending on your teacher, see something similar to this with the, um, let's see, it's the hydration of alkenes using sulfuric acid. Uh, there's a, you can do it in two steps. You can do sulfonation, and then you can do the hydrolysis using water. If you do the sulfonation, you'll go through a process where you actually have to um, do hydrolysis of the sulfate and it's a lot more in depth and I've made a video on how that works if you want to see a far more complicated uh, solvolysis mechanism.